I think we have all seen one of the oldest in particles and dynamics video on YouTube called Maya Galaxy. And today we are going to be recreating that effect with the same idea. Now it is one of the oldest tutorials regarding the in particles and dynamics and it is pretty amazing. So we are going to be using that technique as well with some new adaptive things that we can do with that kind of similar effect. So let's quickly get into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is quickly take a plane. Now this will be my surface from where the particle will be emitting. So today we'll see how we can emit particles from a surface as well. So I'm going to scale this up to create basically a photo frame. Something like this. All right. And I don't need that many subdivisions, so I'm going to keep it something like this. Just once you are done with this, simply hit J and I'm going to rotate this to about 90 degrees. Bring this up and bring this somewhere backwards. All right, so once you're done with this, you can simply go to FX menu and we can get into the end particles. Now, before getting into end particles, we have to do one thing which is creating our image. So I'm here in Photoshop and as you can see, I have a painting on Mona Lisa. So what we have to do is create a bump map or you can say an emission rate image. So for that, we have to create a black and white image. So what I'm going to do is quickly go to filters and I'm going to take a simple hue saturation. You can also go to image adjustment and you can desaturate it as well. So I'm going to select this and uh, quickly desaturate this. And I'm also going to play with some levels to get more better result. Let's make it somewhere about here. And something like this. All right, so this looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna just adjust it somewhere right here, and I'm gonna save this in JPEG mode. All right, so once you're done with the image, let's get back to Maya here in particles. I'm gonna get into image from object and click on that, go to attribute, and here, if I play this, you'll notice that particles are being emitted from the points or all the corners. So what we have to do is instead of Omni, you have to choose surface. And if you play this back, you'll have particles emitting from the surface, which is exactly what we wanted. All right, so the first thing I have to do is uh, add the image attribute to our particle system. So if you scroll down here, you will see texture emission attribute. Now here you see particle color, which will be our color image. And then you see the texture rate, which is our black and white image. So this will produce a color and this will produce the particles from that image. So wherever the black and white parts are, the particle will be emitting and not emitting. All right, so I'm gonna click on this particle color, choose file and upload my color image. All right, so select your particles again, go to emitter, scroll down and for the black and white now. All right, so I have uploaded both my photos and the emitter here. And if I play this back now, you won't see much of things happening because we have to create another attribute for this. So what I'm going to do is go to end particle shape and I'm going to simply go here and here you'll see add dynamic attribute. So I'm going to create a color attribute and here you will see add per particle attribute. So you just have to click on this and add attribute and here you will see RGB per particle. Again, one more thing we have to add is the opacity channel since we are using opacity and a bump map. Not exactly a bump map, but a simple texture map. So wherever the white part is, the texture or you can see particle will be emitted from and wherever the black part is, there will be no particles. So for that, we have to create a opacity and I'm going to choose add per particle attribute and click on that as well. So we have opacity attribute Further on, if you want, you can create expression or ramp if you want. All right. So if I select my end particles, go back and play this, you still don't see any particle or colors. So what we have to do is one last thing. We have to tell Maya to use that inherit color and inherit opacity. Now, once you click on that, now you start to see those color particles. I think the color emission rate is a bit too low. That's why we don't see that much of it. So I'm going to make this thousand and let's play this. All right, so now we see something. Now, one more thing we have to do is let's turn off the gravity. So the particles are emitted straightwards and if you look at from here you can see something so let's increase our particle to about 10,000 and now there you go so you are getting a particled image of Mona Lisa 
So this looks pretty interesting now. And furthermore, if you want, you can also do one thing. You can click on your plane, you can add a new material, stand surface. And in the color channel, simply choose your color image. And there you go. So if I play this now, you can see we have our image as well and our particles as well. Furthermore, if you want, what else you can do is click on your particles. You can add a bit of a turbulence to give some randomness to the particle. And now there you go. So this is a pretty fun way to emit particles from your image. This looks pretty amazing. So have fun with this. Create some more ideas with this. If you want, what else you can do is you can select your particles, go to the nucleus, add some gravity to it, take a simple plane, scale this up, and make this as a pastel collider. Now, if you go back and play this, the particles are being collided here, which is pretty amazing as well. If you look at the end result here. So you can see we have a bit of a collision problem here. To fix that, you can simply go to the collision thickness. And as you can see, the collision thickness is a bit too high for the plane overall. So I'm going to make this somewhere about 20. And if we off and play this again, you have much better simulation going on. So I'm going to select this and maybe like make this one. And also, let's add a bit more down. So let's see, if we need to make 28. All right, and let's make the solver substep value to somewhere about eight as well. This will just help with the collision. Turn off the grid, and also let's take select your particles. Let's take a simple vortex, and now hit play. All right, so I think the bounciness is a bit too much, but uh, yeah, not bad. So I think I'm gonna increase the magnitude on the vortex field. And now you can see the particles are being driven by the vortex. Nice. So this is how you can play around with different things and you can emit particles from the plane as well. If you don't want this plane, just the particle, what else you can do is select your polygon and simply go to object display and turn off the visibility. And if you play this now, what you'll have is just the particles. And if you don't want the particles to be falling down, turn off the gravity and you are good to go. Now only vortex and turbulence are taking place here to emit, it, emit the particles. So now this is a perfect effect if you want several particles. Okay, so that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this one. Have fun with end particles and I'll see you in the next video.